We are back. Final week of Road to the Derby. We have the wild card next week, which we'll have a show for, but final week of the traditional Road to the Derby. Andrew Capone, as always, who's got the action. Caleb Knight, my partner. Um, Caleb, I got the, uh, the the Aqueduct Breeders' Cup shirt on. I got the backwards Kentucky Down shirt hat on. Ready to go. Final week here, Wood Memorial. Before we get into the wood, let's go back and uh, take a look at last week's preps. Anything you saw there that stood out? Uh, I love the shirt, Andrew. I love it. Um, as far as last week, yeah, we had a couple of good races, I think, between the Florida Derby, the Arkansas, and then the Jeff Ruby Stakes. Uh, it was nice to get uh, the winner right of the Florida Derby with White Abario. He looked pretty good there. We had a couple of the top contenders from Florida meeting head-to-head -head between him and Simplification, Classic Causeway. Uh, I thought that White Abario ran a nice race. I would take nothing away from Simplification if you liked him going into that race. I don't think that there's any reason to be down on him after that effort there. The one horse that did take money there was Charge It, too. The Todd Pletcher horse took a lot of money. I, I was against him, and while he didn't win, I, I will say I he looks like a talented colt. That's a horse I probably would be interested in betting back next out. I think he showed a lot of ability with some trouble in that race. So, yeah, I thought that was a Great race, probably my favorite race of the weekend. But uh, what did you think? I'm on the same page with you. Florida Derby was, I thought it was great. I thought simplification, I'm still on the horse, still probably my Derby horse. I, I t didn't take much away from that race. Charge it, absolutely loved. Needs more time. Why so late to the trail now? I would love to have that horse have that one more race before going into the Derby. Um, I think. They might pass. I don't know what they're going to do with that horse yet. It's pretty interesting to see where it pans out. But uh, that horse definitely impressed me a lot. Uh, but I think we're just coming in too late now, um, coming into this uh, late in the season here. So let's take a look at the Wood Memorial, one of my favorites as a New York guy. I love Aqueduct in the winter. It's one of the best meets. Now we're in the Aqueduct Spring. we got the Wood Memorial this weekend. We have a great field of eight going one in eighth a mile in Aqueduct. It's going to be a little wet out there. It's going to be a little sloppy. Let's see how it holds up. Um, just wanted to touch on the bias report before we get into this race. Um, breaking it down, dirt routes, which you don't see too much of at Aqueduct in the winter meet. I'm looking at the last 32 races here. Most of the races are run at one mile as a single turn. When we go to these one and eighth, we go to two turns. Again, we don't see too many during the Aqueduct slop meet. Um, right now, 46%, wire to wire. One thing to take note of here is the inside 1-2 has only been scoring at 15%, yet qualifies in 100% of races. So, again, there's not those horses in spots in every single race. The one and two qualify in every single race, 100% of them, and they're only scoring 15%. So it seems like the inside might be a little bit dead on these routes here. Um, and I think some of that has to do with so many races being run over one turn and not two turns. So I'll lead us off here. going to take the uh, one horse here, Modonagal. Um, Five to two on the morning line. Todd Pletcher with Joe, Joe Rosario up. Finished behind two good horses, Simplification, the Fountain of Use, and White Barrio in the Florida Derby. Last two times out. So those two horses have really shown something good. Ships to New York and draws a dead rail on routes. Uh, needs to be a little closer this time to the pace. Uh, less than 13% of horses coming off four lengths or greater. So again, we're seeing a speed favoring track on these routes, and this is a closer. Um, Irad is in Kentucky, so Joel picks up the mount. Uh, I'm a believer in the worst bet in horse racing is a short price closer. Um, I'm not going to bet it in this game. I'm going to pass on this horse. Uh, what do you think of the two and the three? Yeah, number two, Golden Code. Uh, this was a horse that broke his maiden against New York Bread Company over a sloppy track. Uh, he got everything his own way in that maiden score. Uh, loose on the lead, very slow fractions. And he came back in the Gotham, and it seems like handicappers didn't really respect that effort. They let this horse go off at 27 to 1, which is almost unheard of for a Todd Pletcher, Kendrick Armouche, and Aqueduct uh, in the Gotham. And he didn't run poorly. He was really no threat to Morello at any point in that race, but he was pretty wide on the track for most of the race. And he was facing winners for the first time while stretching out a little bit. So, you know, I don't think he ran poorly, but I think he needs to improve a lot to be able to compete with. A couple of the other runners in today, I think this is a tougher field than that Gotham. And I just don't see him really being able to enjoy the trip that he got in his maiden score, setting the pace on a slow, uh, slow lead today. So this is not a horse I'm going to uh, support, no matter what the price really is. The number three, early voting. So speaking of setting the pace, this is the horse that more than likely will be on the lead. And as much as I know that you've been, uh, you've been in the simplification camp for a long time, I've been beating the drum saying the Withers was a much better race than people have 
and they're initially giving her credit for. Early voting is probably uh, my derby pick right now. Uh, we'll see what he does. I, this could blow up in my face pretty easily if he comes out here and lays an egg because he's not even in the gate right now. But I thought his withers was just incredibly impressive. If you look at the raw fractions and the raw times, they may not seem that quick, but for folks that don't play Aqueduct that often, it is a slow track. It is not a quick glib surface like you see over in Gulfstream or other places or the fairgrounds. It's a slow, deep, heavier track, especially in the mud. And he set what was actually a wicked pace that day. Any horse that was near the front in that withers backed way up. The second and third was dominated by closers. And I just thought early voting was incredibly impressive there. Uh, we already know that Unoho came back to win at Oaklawn and the Rebel. And then he kind of disappointed in the uh, Arkansas Derby, but I thought he had a couple excuses in that race. So I think that early voting is more than likely going to be my pick here. I think he's extremely talented. He does have a lot of pace to deal with. He does need to prove it once more uh, and improve a little bit. As good as that race was, it still isn't quite fast enough to win. But I think he's a huge player in this race. That takes us to number four long term. What do you think of him, Andrew? So long term is another interesting one. Uh, big price. Uh, I'm going to need all of 20 to one for this horse. Um, anytime you have speed with JJ lately, it just hasn't been working out. He has not been able to get up to the front, out to the front like he used to and hold it. Uh, speed figures are OK. Top four in the mix. Um, the horse's running style is perfect for the track. He, if he has any shot, he's going to have to go early, and he's going to have to try to run with early voting. And I agree with you, early voting looks very good here. Um, two downsides, Kendrick steps off um, for the two uh, when given the choice. And, you know, this horse may not want the extra eighth of a mile. It might be just a miler here. Um, JJ, again, has to break if he has any shot. I'm probably going to use the horse underneath. I think this is a horse that maybe can hold on for a piece, um, but not necessarily in love with it and, and – 20 to 1, I think yeah, I'm going to need a little more than that. Uh, Morello, uh, Steve Aspen, Jose Lascano, 3 for 3 for lifetime, but it'll try further than it's ever tried before. Speed fingers continue to step forward every single time. Horse will be short, um, but I think he might be a little bit deeper waters to the year than what he's faced before. I think he's going to have a little bit more of a, a pace, content pace contention to set with. Um, Harry has the 50 derby points, so we're pretty much in. Uh, I'm going to look to beat this fave, even though there's a there's a good chance it's uh, it, it could be up there at the end of the race. Um, what did you think of the six Skippy Longstocking? Quite the little name. Yeah, I think if we were evaluating the race on uh, the horse with the best name, I think he'd be probably your morning line favorite in here. So I think Skippy Longstocking, he's a bit of a of an odd horse to try to figure out. He seems like he kind of took a while to put things together as a two-year-old he is very heavily raced for uh only being in april of his three-year-old campaign he's definitely has more races than any other horse in this field so you can take that as a positive or a negative uh, he's shown in some races where he wants to be right up on the lead but then in his last race he showed a new dimension where he sat pretty far off of a very quick pace and just inhaled the leaders that day and pulled away with a really impressive score uh, that's by far a career best for him. So I think it kind of depends if you if you think that he can repeat that effort and let the speed horses go, get a closing stalking kind of trip here and what should be a pretty quick pace, then I think that it's not out of the realm of possibility for this horse to significantly outrun his odds and maybe get a minor award or get a piece of this. I think if there's a chance that he may go backwards off that big race, uh, and not necessarily repeated as well. So it just kind of remains to be seen. But I do think he's an interesting player if you're looking for underneath horse. The number seven is AP Secret. So that's the other half of the Safi Joseph entries. So it's uh, interesting to see that he sends both of these up to New York, uh, most likely to avoid White Barrio in the Florida Derby last week, which turned out to be a pretty good move given the way that that horse ran. So I think AP Secret is a horse that's I'm not really sure I can picture the path to victory for this cult. I think he's a nice runner. I really do. Uh, looking back at that fountain of youth, that race was marred with a, a spill where there were a couple of horses clipped heels and went down. So the replay of that race cuts out in the center, but rewatching that race, it, it sort of seems like AP secret was starting to back up anyway at that point. Uh, I'm not really sure that he was going to finish significantly better than he did, even with the trouble being considered. Um, he's also a horse that likes to be forwardly placed and there's going to be a pretty contentious pace up front. This is not a horse I'm super excited to bet in this race. 
All right. Andrew, why don't you uh, round us out with the number eight horse, uh, Barisi? So we come to the eight, Barisi here, uh, stepping out of uh, protected skate stakes company for the first time to try to compete, complete an unbeaten career so far. Um, the red hot Dylan Davis steps on. Let's talk about a jockey that's 27% right now. 27% um, jockey training combo here. I mean, just continuously winning. Yesterday, he was back in pairs of wins, misses a race, pair of wins. Um, he's just red hot right now at, at uh, Aqueduct. There are some better jockeys stepping into the grounds coming up from Florida and from uh, and from California for this uh, for this day. Uh, runs against the bias here, so he'll really need early voting to go early and maybe take long term with him, and we'll see a possibility of a melt. Um, again, this is not necessarily the closer I want, but it is a bigger, pri a bigger price here. Tries as long as distance of a career but continues to improve every single time a new better speed figure new better speed figure uh time form really likes this horse i'm interested to see what happens here um, again a new york bread stepping out maybe this is a little bit too deep waters for him. maybe should be waiting for something better um in the in the spring at belmont but i'm going to use this horse in my exact and tries possibly passing tiring horses late um so we come to our top picks here that rounds out our field of eight caleb who'd you like yeah, so I think I tipped my hand a little bit earlier, but I landed on the number three early voting. Uh, I do respect Morello in here uh, as the morning line favorite, but I, I have a couple of concerns just about the distance and whether he's going to be completely cranked up for this race or not. Whereas early voting, I mean, I've been a big fanboy of the weathers ever since it was run. I, I said for a while that that race, the figures came back too slow, and ultimately they did uh, move up the buyers from that race by about nine points. And I think that I was just very impressed with this horse's effort. Jose Ortiz had a couple of options. He could have rode Zandon in the bluegrass for Chad Brown, but instead he ends up here. I love the fact this horse has already proven at a mile and an eighth, especially over this aqueduct surface, which doesn't play uh, like a whole lot of other surfaces compared to, you know, Gulfstream or whatever else. So I'm all in on early voting. That's going to be my pick. And uh, you know, as it stands today, I'd be interested in seeing what you could get on him in a futures poll for the Derby. Well, I'm right there with you on early voting for my top pick. Uh, it's chalk, and I need a glass of water for how chalky it might be, but there, he's done nothing wrong, and I, I can't can't go against it. We've spoken about this key race over and over again in our shows, um, and this should put the nail in the coffin. Two for two, and that Withers win just was in the slop, held clear, driving, um, running style and bias fit perfect for this track. As long as long-term doesn't press him too early on that pace, but I don't even think he should be able to even get to early voting. Early voting should walk him around. Uh, a winner puts... I think Jose Ortiz in a little bit of a bind here. Is he going to sit on early voting in the derby or is he going to sit on simplification? Uh, he's one on both and both are going to qualify. I'm going to guess he's going to go with early voting uh, based on his relationship with uh, Chad Brown versus Anthony Sano, Antonio Sano. So we'll see what happens here. Early voting is going to be my top pick. Um, when we're talking about long shots, I'm not going to do much here. Uh, I'm going to be playing some tries and exactas and, and keying some horses around, but I'm going to focus for my long shot play on Barisi. That number eight we previously spoke about. Dylan Davis stays top. The value of an unbeaten horse like this, if I can get eight, 10, 12 to one, I think it's going to be good. It's going to be an outside post which helps the running style, be able to get to that rail, save ground, um, and have an opportunity to pass some tiring horses in one big run at the end. So I'm going to sit on that eight horse Barisi as I'm going to, as my long shot play. Um, not necessarily to win, but definitely in my exact and tries. Did you land on a long shot? Yeah, Andrew, I think we're seeing this race pretty similarly. Uh, we both like early voting. I, I definitely respect Barisi. Uh, if I had to pick a long shot here, I guess my thinking is if a long shot wins this race, it's probably because some of the logical contenders just go way too quick and duel up front. So I'd be looking for a horse that might come off the pace. I think your pick, Barisi, makes a ton of sense. And the other one I think that might be able to outrun the odds is that six horse Skippy Longstocking. This horse, it is a little uncertain as what he's going to do. It is a little uncertain if he's going to repeat that last effort or not, how he's going to handle aqueduct surface. But Junior Alvarado, you know, had choice between the Safi mounts. He ends up here. This horse showed that he can close and uh, run around a pretty good race last time out. I, I think if he does turn a corner and repeats or moves forward off that, he should be able to pick off some of the tired runners late. I love that. I love we're on the same page there. I will say it's a little sketchy to me, these two Safi runners coming here after the pissing the Florida Derby. I think there might be some games being played. I'm interested to see if this pace sets up like it's projected right now. That's our field of eight horses for the Wood Memorial at Aqueduct Racetrack. Uh, 445 post time. Great card there with the uh, Carter as well. 
Um, good, good little opportunities to, to, to bet some races. Uh, it's also a great race in, in the cross country pick five, which they put out a nice little sequence this week between Keeneland and Aqueduct. So definitely take a look. Eight races, hor- eight horses going one and one eighth of a mile at Aqueduct this Saturday, 4.45 p.m., race number eight. We ask you to like and subscribe. That way you get updates on all of our Road to the Derby and Horse Racing Nation videos. We'll be back with two more videos this week. Thank you for listening.